It is a story that the San Antonio Express News and we here at KSAT had last night. State Senator Roland Gutierrez sharing details about that day in Uvalde when the gunman opened fire inside a classroom. DPS officials telling him that between two to 13 officers, DPS troopers, were in that building at any given time while that gunman was opening fire on the classroom. State Senator Roland Gutierrez joins us now live for our case at Q&A. State Senator, since then, there's been, you've kind of been at the center of the swirl of information and then taking it back and then going forward. I mean, how do you, how does, I mean, what does all this say to you? Yeah, it's such a big concern, Steve, because, you know, from the beginning, we've been very transparent with people. We've been very truthful. Um, you know, those conversations that I had with Steve McCraw, at, at first they were considered private conversations, but, you know, in the lapse of time, we've gotten no information from DPS. And so I've been sharing them with the public. I mean, there was no reason why I shouldn't. Um, when they closed this investigation down for this so-called criminal investigation, when they closed down all the briefings, I felt compelled to start telling people what actually went on. As you know, this morning, DPS said that what I had said was false. Uh, they let her, they let her took that back. Um, I think that we had given them ample uh, evidence and information to show them that I was right. And so they have since tried to claw back what they've said about me. It's a big concern for me because I don't want this story to be about me. It needs to be about these children and these families and about law enforcement's failure to go in as quickly as they should have. And DPS has said today that those two to 13 officers that were on campus at that time, they were evacuating students and staff. Uh, they said that it was not as perhaps depicted in their opinion, officers being hunkered down outside of the classroom. However, in your conversations with the head of DPS, Steve McCraw, is it correct that he said he regrets standing down during this situation? He said specifically that DPS will never stand down to another law enforcement entity again. So um, does that give you, and I, I wanna clarify here, because as this information about what has happened has really been piecemealed together over the last several weeks, we've heard from the Uvalde ISD police chief who said that he did not know he was the incident commander. In your conversations with the head of DPS, was the Uvalde ISD supposed to be in command? Well, you have these competing narratives and DPS will have us think that he was supposed to be in command, but at the same time, they leak out through their own officers. They leak out the information to the New York Times that Arredondo doesn't have his radios. So if he doesn't have his radios, then how then does he make himself the incident commander? How is that? How does he communicate orders to anyone? And so certainly a lot of negligence that went on on all sides, from the ISD cops, from the sheriffs, from the police, from DPS. At some point, we just need to own up to our mistakes and errors, tell the community what truly happened here, and get to the bottom of this. It just keeps becoming one you know, false story after another, pointing fingers for a while. They blamed a teacher for leaving the door open for a week. This poor lady had to go off and hire a lawyer and say, I closed the door, I closed the door. DPS owes us more than this. We spent $4 billion in this region. Many of those Lone Star, Operation Lone Star troopers were at the scene. They certainly should have gone in quickly. DPS has said that, McCraw has said that, and they erred. But for them to hide behind this criminal investigation and to make accusations like they did from me today, that, that suggesting that I'm lying, is, is just, uh, it's uncalled for. It's not fair. It's not fair to the Texas public. I don't know, uh, Senator, that we have seen an investigation like this. I mean, unfortunately, we've had several mass uh, shooting incidents uh, and we've seen a lot of updates and we kind of had a general idea. I can I can think of like 48 hours after the incident of what happened, how it actually played out. We still have a lot of he said, he said, he said, she said kind of going on. I mean, even even with the Uvalde DA and with the mayor and then with, you know, all of these entities that are taking place. How do we get to this point? You know, 
all of this community wants to do is a couple of things. These parents want to heal. Certainly they need and deserve answers. About three children probably bled out and might have been saved. And so those families deserve to know what, what occurred. Why we're here, I, have the, I haven't the slightest clue. I don't know why the district attorney has suddenly created this criminal investigation so that everybody can hide behind her, not tell us the truth. Um, I mean, I guess you'd have to ask her. But yes, this weekend, she put out a letter in the Uvalde News Leader that her investigation is going to take six to eight months. The perpetrator's dead. Unless she's going to go off and indict all of the cops at the scene, I, I don't understand what we're even talking about. What I'm, I'm not even asking about criminality, if there was co-conspirators that we don't know about or social media threats that we don't know about or anything. I'm not talking about that. I want to see operational logistics. I don't know. I need to see the operational logistics as to what we know. We deserve it. I think we froze up. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but we, we got the gist of what you said. It, it, you're talking about Christina Busby, who is the uh, district attorney uh, in Uvalde County. And, and you mentioned this earlier, Senator, that this is about those 21 lives that were lost, 19 children who were gunned down in a classroom two teachers who died trying to protect them. And I, you know, as this information continues to come out and it's conflicting and it's confusing, that's who I think about, these families. These families who are dealing with an unimaginable loss. And now, you know, how do you try to move forward as you learn that not all the information is, is known exactly about what happened? And, and I just, I want to know what you think we do going forward. You continue to release this information that either hasn't been publicly released yet or at the very least clarified. What do we do with that as this investigation moves forward and we continue looking for answers? Well, I, I've released everything that I've known over the last several weeks in, in a timely fashion. I had been talking about these 13 officers in this hallway troopers for some time now. Um, what I need to do is to make sure that my constituents have the resources that government has to offer, to make sure that they have the health care resources, the financial resources that are important to them. Uh, I'm going to continue to do that. Uh, these folks need to know that they have a new friend, you know, someone that loves them and someone that cares for them. We need a lot more love in this state, for sure, and I know that sounds flippant, but it's the truth. And while we keep hiding behind these things that these unanswered questions. We're never going to be able to get to the bottom of this so that we can allow these families to heal. And they do. They need that. Uvalde deserves it. State Senator, I want to so ask I you one. I want, I want to ask you one more quick question because we're running out of time here. Or we're out of time. But uh, are you concerned that we're never going to get some of those answers? I know there's a loophole that uh, uh, was talked about in the El Paso shooting that they're never going to release the uh, body cam footage because the shooter is deceased and there's a lot of concern that there's a state loophole that will protect law enforcement from ever having to release some of this video and some of the details about what happened inside. Are you concerned that we may never get the full picture? Oh, very much. Uh, yesterday we saw a report from Vice News where DPS is asking the Attorney General's office to hide the body cam footage because which, by the way, gives us the situational awareness because they say that future perpetrators would know DPS's weaknesses in their protocols. I think by now we all know their weaknesses. I want to know where those DPS troopers were in those rooms, in those hallways, where they were situated outside, and how long they were there, and when they got there. Senator Roland Gutierrez, thanks so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much.